Hello movie lovers, it's Ip again. Back after some time today, asking the question, is still photography an art? Many celebrated filmmakers, such as Stanley Kubrick, have started their careers as photographers. Andrei Tarkovsky also comes to mind, who always took his Polaroid camera with him to shoot his unique brand of snapshots. In general, movies are thought of as motion pictures, as photographic images with just the aspect of motion added. But according to the late philosopher Sir Roger Scruton, there is a vast distinction between still photography and film in terms of considering them art forms, especially as representational art forms. It is Marilyn Monroe who represents the female saxophonist, says Scruton in an essay entitled Fantasy, Imagination and the Screen, referring, of course, to the movie Some Like It Hot. But I think she was a ukuleleist in the movie. Anyway, Scruton goes on. She does this as it is done on the stage by acting the part. If representation were not understood in this way, then it would be extraordinary that we should think of film as fictions with a dramatic significance involving character, plot and denouement. Clearly, you might say, still photography must be representational art too. After all, this is precisely what a photograph does. It represents something the camera has encountered in real life. So let's follow Sir Roger's argument. If you arrange a plate full of apples, you would not consider that art, even if the apples display beautiful colors in an ever so subtle twilight. Now, if you get yourself a brush and easel, a canvas and some oil paint, you can try to capture that beauty in a painting. Something happens during the process, beginning from looking at the object, then there is some thought process, and finally your mind directs the hand with the brush over the canvas surface. Painting an apple is an action that is definitely distinct from merely looking at one. Looking is input, while painting is output. For instance, you can only express a thought or emotion via output. You can make somebody look at the same apple as you by saying, look at that apple. But this will not make the person spoken to see the apple the same way you do. You cannot command, look at the apple the way I do. What I can do is say a thing like, look at how cheerful the apple greets the golden sun rays, by which I would have introduced poetry into our conversation, which by itself is an expressive art form. Expression in a picture is everything in it that is not representation. Sir Roger Scruton now argues that placing a mirror next to the apple will produce an image of the apple in the reflection. Yet this image will not be a representation of the apple, at least not more than the appearance of the apple itself is to the eye. And Sir Roger quotes Oliver Wendell Holmes, who regarded the early technique of photography, called daguerreotypie, as a mirror with a memory. Well, you may add, this argument does not apply to the art of photography. Not only does the photographer carefully choose his objects, but he also arranges them according to artistic rules. Isn't that true? Yeah, well, fair enough. But arranging apples on a platter according to certain rules does not turn table arrangements into representational art. What we are dealing here with might simply be called staging or arranging a tableau vivant. If that is an art form, so would any form of arranging things. 
like, say, pieces of furniture in a room, B. Early photographers meant to create art by staging tableau before a camera's lens. Just look at some of the works by photographer Henry Peach Robinson, who replaced the canvas with the camera to capture classical motives. Those pictures today seem totally obsolete. Isn't the art of photography about the skill of capturing the moment rather than arranging stuff before an apparatus? If that's the case, photography is more a craft than an art, a skill like uh, juggling or doing légère de main tricks. Well, according to a modernist point of view, arranging stuff can also be art if it purports to deliver some message as long as this message has a social or existentialist function. Behold Tracy Emin's bed, as it is exhibited in London's modern Tate Gallery. Whatever we might call this, it is not representational art, if it is art at all. To Rutter Scruton, art always has been about skill and beauty, and not so much about originality. But I digress. Let's get back to our topic. Again, you might argue that a photographer's work is not done by merely pressing the camera's trigger. He has to develop the image, apply all sorts of chemistry, or, in our digital age, use an image-enhancing computer application like Photoshop, whereby he might drastically alter the picture's appearance. Fair enough, Scruton would have answered, but this is precisely where photography becomes similar to painting again. Therefore, whenever we consider photography a representational art, it is either before the act of taking the picture, through arranging and staging the motive, or after that, when the image is treated like a painting by altering sharpness, hue, contrast, or even cutting out, pasting and rearranging items. Let's assume we rent a studio in a city with a view of street scenery whose beauty we would like to share with others. So what we do is we place a chair next to the window from where you get a particular view. Still, we want to artistically interfere, for instance, by using pieces of cardboard to block certain parts from the view. Thus, we highlight some parts of the street that would have slipped your attention after taking our seat in front of that window. No matter how much I try to alter your perspective with all sorts of blockings and contraptions, the street you see will always be the street itself, the real thing and not a representation. Therefore, a photograph is more of an artifact than a piece of art. It documents a state of affairs and often makes us wonder what lies beyond the frame. After all, we know that the camera's lens only captures a fraction of the scenery. By contrast, the painting captures an idea on canvas, started by observation without suggesting that something is hidden beyond the frame. There is no more reality than the reality of the idea which is contained within the frame. Sir Roger makes the comparison between an old photograph of an English street and a painting by Canaletto to prove his point. Whilst an old photograph might be construed as a window into the past, the painting, strayed from the artist's mind, captures an idea, or as I tend to say, it makes something invisible visible. What is depicted here is not a captured moment, but timelessness. OK, in a future installment I shall talk about what all this means for the moving pictures, the movies. I suggest you watch, if you haven't yet, my video on semiotics, some of which will be of importance regarding the movies as dramatic art. That's it for now. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want more to come. My friends, God bless.